This is Infographic Instant with uh, Brian Michael. In this episode, we're going to be asking the question, uh, would reform to Hong Kong's anti-corruption laws obtain enough votes? So in other words, we're trying to assess not whether such a policy should happen, but would it happen given the economic incentives provided by Hong Kong assisting mainland authorities with the fight against corruption. Now, a bit of background to the infographic. As we discussed in previous infographics, there are basically three levels of analyzing a policy. The first is to look at whether the policy should be done, and that that's a positive analysis. And the second level is part of a normative analysis looking at financial incentive compatibility. And that basically asks the question, is it in the government's financial interest in terms of tax revenue collected in order to go forward with a policy? Because we know that governments cannot pursue any policy that they want because if they run out of money, then they'll no longer be able to function. Therefore, the extent to which policies generate positive social, social benefits, that's an important consideration. And the third level, of course, is political incentive compatibility. And that asks if the policy generates income to particular constituencies, which gives them the economic incentives to vote for a particular policy. So if you're an economist, you don't believe necessarily in political values and ideals. You, you narrow your analysis only to the incentives provided by those policies and particularly the economic incentives. So let us turn our attention now to the infograph you see in front of you. And we were assessing uh, estimated political uh, positions to suggested reforms by Hong Kong's political interests. So what we did is we costed out the effect of the various proposals made in our paper to different political groups. So we have organized different interests along political lines but of course we had to attach economic considerations or those areas where these groups received their income in order to do our analysis. So even though we're using political party labels, this analysis absolutely does not look at uh, political views in themselves. Now in terms of analyzing the uh, economic incentives of various members of these parties, we see that if all our proposals were passed at the same time, there would not be enough votes in order to push through the reform. So in other words, this, the, the policies that we have recommended as a group are not politically incentive com compatible. What that requires is what's called optimal voting design. And that means that the various reforms have to be sliced up and they have to be implemented at different times in order to give uh, those constituencies time to accumulate benefits. So for example, uh, one set of reforms might be passed, providing income to a group such as Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong. They would, because they see that they have generated short-term income and benefits from uh, this small part of the package of reforms, they are more likely to realign incentives for uh, passing other parts of the reform. So just to, to sum up, the infograph you are looking at assesses the various incentives to particular political parties based on their economic interests, and it's, it's a gateway to discussing optimal voting design. This has been Infographic Instant with Brian Michael.